Okay guys, so now you know, we're not making a t-shirt, we're not making a cardigan or a scarf, we are making what I am terming, I am calling the Nirvancho Poncho. It's the Nirvana inspired 1991 t-shirt poncho. So this is my inspiration. This is my color story. I am going with textures on this one. We want it to look boho, hippie, stoner, drug rug looking kind of a 1991 grunge, trashy sort of thing. The kind of the 90s. Kids hanging out on the streets for days on end, never going home. That is what this is going to be. Okay, it's a whole vibe. So this is the colorway. I will be using khaki, which is this right here. And this is actually a textured yarn. This is the Super Red Heart Super Saver Brushed. You do not have to use my colorway. You do not have to use the yarns I am picking. The color is called Khaki. I don't know how much of this I'm gonna need, so look in the description box down below as I will know all of the amounts whenever I'm done making it. I've never made this before. Um, for the light colored green, yellowish green here, I am going with chartreuse the color i was missing so this one here is going to be karen simply soft because i could not find this perfect color i needed you can see the color is just right i could not find it in any other brand or i could but it was ridiculously expensive and it was wool and i'm using all acrylic so this is going to be karen simply soft it's a little bit thinner but that's okay because we're going to also change hooks up a little bit and then get started i'm making a quick color change i've decided this one here is just a little too bright green i am going to go with the super saver tea leaf whenever you look at it it it, it does seem to be a more muted more yellowy type green and so i think the super saver tea leaf is actually going to be the better choice over this if you can't get your hands on this, I think this is gonna be a great substitute as they are quite similar. It's just this one here is a little bit brighter. This one here is a little more drab. I want drab because the piece looks drab. So yes, I have just decided to all of a sudden change my mind after really looking at it under the light. This one here is gonna be the better choice. So moving on now. Okay, I will be using five millimeter with the brushed yarn but because we're going to be working with a linked double crochet in this portion right here, which is a tight knit stitch, you'll want to bump up to a 5.5 millimeter if your tension is relaxed to loose. If your tension is typically quite tight, I would bump up to a 6 or even a 6.5 millimeter. The Link double crochet will take a normal row of double crochet and notch them in just a little bit because you're linking them together. There's not going to be a lot of give. Okay, so let's just get right into it. I'm going to start with the Red Heart Brushed in Khaki. I highly recommend, as I am a relaxed to moderate tension crocheter, and the first time I tried to make this, no matter what I did, my starting work was rainbowing. So I highly recommend that even though we're going to be using a five millimeter hook for the stitches, use a six millimeter hook for your starting chain, just to give you the best chance at having the right look. Okay, so we're gonna start off with a chain of 100. The chain count on this, if you wanna change the size, if you wanna make it big for a man or smaller for a teenager or a child, the stitch count is gonna be three, and then you will add three more at the end. So just keep chaining three over and over again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then when you get the measurement that you need, add three more at the end for your turning chain. Everybody is different. You're just gonna to have to measure the person you wanna make it for. All right, so we're gonna start off with a chain of 100. That's gonna be 97 plus three for our turning chain. So a, a total of 100. And I am doing these very loosely, as you can see, very loosely. 
Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, there is the 100. I'm going to switch now to the five millimeter hook. And skipping the first three stitches, and I recommend working in the back chain, it's gonna create a nice clean seam at the bottom as the bottom's not gonna get an additional border. So way it's gonna look now is the way your border is always gonna look. So skip three chains and in the fourth chain over or the fourth back bump over, work three double crochet into that stitch. If you pick up the pattern, and in this video you will note, I'm calling this stitch the Van Dyke stitch. Reason being, that's what it was originally called it was named after the person who came up with it, who first started using it and putting it in patterns. And the earliest find we have of this stitch being used is in the 1840s. Specifically, I have a book from 1848 to, we're gonna skip two chains, one, two, and in the third chain over, work a Van Dyke stitch, three double crochet into the same chain. I have a book from 1848 referencing this stitch. And, so I know we now call it the granny stitch. We literally only call it that. We're gonna skip two chains, one, two, in the third chain over. This is the repeat all the way to the end. Gonna work the Van Dyke stitch all the way to the end. The only reason we call it a granny stitch is because we use it in granny squares. I don't know exactly when the name changed, but I do know that it was also not always called a granny stitch or a Van Dyke stitch. Skip two chains and in the third one over. It was called the Van Dyke stitch from what I can see. The last pattern I saw this stitch being referenced as being the Van Dyke stitch was in the early 1870s in a Godey's Lady book, ladies book, a pattern written by Miss Jane Weaver. And uh, after that, people started calling this a cluster stitch and then they started calling it a shell stitch. I would seem I have a little knot here. This is a brand new ball, so that is the manufacturer's knot. They started calling it a shell stitch. And then after that, when we started making granny squares, and it went back to being called a cluster stitch too in the 40s and in the 50s. And at some point, it started being called the granny stitch for no other reason than a granny square. Skip two chains. So there is a little bit of stitch terminology history for you, but I will be uh, recrediting, although we don't know exactly who this person is and what patterns they wrote, um, but I am going to harken back to the original creator of this stitch and credit that person by calling it what it was always called, the Van Dyke stitch. V-A-N-D-Y-K-E. Okay, so again, you'll find that in the, uh, in the written pattern as well. So we're gonna work this all the way to the end. I will be right back. Okay, I have three stitches left. Skip two and work my last Van Dyke stitch at the end. And we will worry about measurements after the third at the end of the third row because if you try to match up the measurements that you have right now with the measurements that are in the description box like let's say for woman you know a uh, female adult um it's not going to be the same because as you add more stitches the size of this chain is or the size of this row one is going to change it's probably going to either come in a little or go out a little it just you know that's the way it is when you're working with flat panels and crochet your row one is one way, but then you start adding stitches in in-betweens and whatnot, and it could bring it in or it could expand it out. So don't worry about measurements until we get a couple of rows in. But I already made the first panel. The, oh, by the way, we're making this in two panels, front panel and back panel. And um, it's gonna, it's, the measurements are correct. Okay, end with three double crochet. They're not two, Karina. Now we're going to work a stacked single, so just give yourself a little bit of slack there on that loop, but don't chain one. Turn, go back into the top of that last double crochet you worked, pull up, okay, and then yarn over and complete your single crochet. Now you can see the side of our stitch here has two loops. Well, we're going to work into this one right here. We call this the forward loop. 
So let's go right into that and pull up another loop and work our second single crochet. That is a stacked single that replaces a chain three. Okay, now we're going to jump over to the chain one or to the space. It's not a chain one space, but into the space and work our next Van Dyke stitch. And there we go. This is the top right here. This is the top of our stacked single. And you can see that when we work back into it, we're going to have a nice straight edge. Okay. Yarn over and start working your Van Dyke stitches. It's also, by the way, it's technically called a Van Dyke open crochet stitch. That's what it's called. The reason they call it open crochet is because it leaves opened spaces. That's also what they used to call fillet crochet in the 1840s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 1890s. It started to change a little bit and they started calling it fillet crochet. There we go. Not this. This wasn't called fillet crochet, but working with open squares, you know. But okay. So work your Van Dyke stitches all the way to the other end, and I will meet back up with you when we get down to the other end. Okay. Let's finish this end together. So we have one full Van Dyke stitch here on the end, but we also have this chain three. So what we're going to do is, in the, even though we started with only one, like, double crochet here. We're actually going to end with a Van Dyke stitch. So into the top of this chain three, we're going to work three double crochet into the same chain, two and three. Now the next stitch up is going to have just the single stitch. So we will give ourselves a little slack on that hook. There we go. Go into that last double crochet we made, pull up a loop, make a single crochet, and then into that forward loop right there, we make another single crochet. Yarn over and into the space between the two stitches, make another stitch. This is going to be the repeat for a total of seven rows, not seven more rows, so we worked row one, row two, we're starting row three, we need four, five, six, and seven. So four more rows after the row we're working on now for a total of seven. So before you finish your seventh row, come on back, we're gonna do some color changing. I will see you then. And we're also gonna do some hook changing. This is where the 5.5 millimeter hook will come in, or if you work with a tight tension, you'll wanna use your six or even 6.5 millimeter hook. I will be right back. I wanted to finish off row three with you. As you can see, we have one Van Dyke stitch and then we have our stacked single on the end. And you can count the tops, one, two, three, four. So in this fourth stitch, we're going to work our three double crochet. One, two, oops, and then three. There we go because you can see we've got a Van Dyke stitch down here, then our stacked single. Van Dyke, now the next one is going to be our stacked single, so we give a little slack on the thread there, on the yarn, go back into the last stitch we worked, and work our two single crochets on top of each other. Then we just yarn over and jump over to the space between and start working our stitches again. Okay, I will be back whenever I am just about finished with my seventh row of the Van Dyke stitch section. Okay, seven rows done. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I just have one stitch left to work here on the end. I'm gonna complete it though with a different hook and our new color, but I'm gonna start it with the five. So just pull through one, then I will Grab the 5.5 millimeter because we're going to work with link double crochet and that is actually going to make our stitches a little tight. And so we want to make up the difference by using a bigger hook. Okay, I'm going to grab the chartreuse now and be sure to leave in, leave a long tail for weaving in. Complete that stitch. Okay, let's 
chain one and turn. Make a bit of a loose pull there and into the very first stitch we just slip stitched into, work a slip stitch, a loose slip stitch. So we're not gonna work the link double crochet yet, but the reason I switched to the 5.5 with the slip stitches is because we want these to be very loose. Because we don't want them to, to like cinch anything in. We want some stretch. We're gonna work one row of slip stitch all the way to the end, but don't finish your last stitch. I mean, we're gonna change color, so. Just like this, make sure everything is loose to where you have stretch. Mostly so that the fabric can flow and not have strange points where it's sort of tense, where it has like high tension. Okay, here we go. I will be right back. Okay, I just have one slip stitch left to work. Now I'm going to grab the tea leaf by red heart super saver and work my last slip stitch with that so i will go into the top of my last stitch which is the stacked single and complete that oops talk about not being prepared go complete my last slip stitch with the new color just like that now don't cut, don't cut the yellow or the chartreuse. Leave it hanging because we're gonna work this way and then we're gonna work up this, to the next row and come back over and pick that chartreuse back up. Okay, chain two. We're gonna work link double crochet now. With link double crochet, these two chains here are used as a builder. So into the very first chain you made right down here, you wanna go into the front loop of that first chain, just like that, and pull up a loop. This is the same as yarning over. We don't yarn over with link double crochet. Working into these side bars is our yarn over. Now we also don't wanna work into the chartreuse here. That needs to remain the way it looks. So you have to be careful and only pick up those khaki or gray colored stitches pull through two and pull through two. Now you will see that we have got, here is the top of our stitch right here, but we're not gonna work into that. We're gonna work into this side bar right here, just below, here's the side top of the stitch right here. And then we have this side bar right just below it. That's what we're gonna work into. You'll wanna go into that side bar, pull up a loop, Go into the next stitch over, which is going to be just the khaki. Pull through two, pull through two. Now here is that sidebar again. Actually, the two sidebars are now touching each other, but here is the next sidebar we're gonna work into, right here. Pull up, oops, sorry. So we will pull up a loop, go into the next stitch over, Make sure we don't pick up any of the chartreuse. Pull up a loop and then pull through two, pull through two. And you can see that these other sidebars that we worked into create a line that really directs you into the next sidebar, which is right here, right there. Pull up a loop, next stitch over. And this is how the front should look. That's why you don't want to work into that chartreuse. Pull up a loop into that sidebar. Next stitch over. There we go. This is going to create a lot of fun textures with this piece. As you can see, we have this very, very fuzzy, fuzzy yarn. And the more you wear and wash this yarn, the fuzzier and more felted it's going to get. And then we have this non-felted smooth yarn, but with a nice tight knit unique texture. You see the line it's creating? It creates a unique texture. It's just, I think it's going to be very visually stimulating. In fact, I will show you here in just a moment what we are trying to accomplish here. There we go. Sidebar. 
next stitch over and once you get the hang of it it goes by really fast now this first row of link double crochet is probably the most time consuming because you have to work so hard to avoid picking up that chartreuse then whenever we start working row two of the link double crochet oh it's fast it's very fast all right let me show you what it is if i can get into this stitch here Oh, I was going into the wrong stitch. Okay, here is what we are working toward. And you can see all the different neat textures that this link double crochet is so totally different from a regular double crochet. There's the back and here is the front. Okay, and then of course the fuzzy yarn, look at that. Do you see what I mean about, now this is just from me working with this, the yarn wound up really getting really quite fuzzy, um, but I love all the different textures. And as a reminder, this was my inspiration, the shirt worn by Kurt Cobain in the music video for Smells Like Teen Spirit. And I think I am pulling it off. I really do. You can see that is like an olive drab, I think, or even olive. And I found khaki works fine. Um, I think it looks really good. So this is what we are trying to accomplish here. And I just love the different textures of the yarn, the, the absolute fuzziness of this yarn here you can really see the fuzziness now and the more you wear and wash this the fuzzier it's gonna get and this isn't gonna be fuzzy at all and it's just gonna be really cool looking I think so let's keep going okay so we're gonna work this link double crochet all the way to the end and I will show you how we move up to the second row and then we will go from there Okay, I will be right back. Okay, I just have one last stitch to work on this first row, then we will work the second row together. This one is just a little tricky because you really need to avoid working in that chartreuse, but it's all kind of tied together a little bit. Just gotta get it in there, Here we go. Okay, now we chain two, because again, with link double crochet, these act as our builders. They kind of act as our yarn over. Turn and into that very first chain we made down here on the bottom, work into that front loop only of that chain and pull up a loop. Now into our very first stitch right here, we complete our link double crochet. And there is the sidebar that we need to work into right there. And then the next stitch over, there we go, sidebar, next stitch over. It's pretty easy. And now that we aren't trying to avoid the slip stitches down here, it can be really fast. The hardest part about link double crochet is getting used to the idea of not yarning over first. But once you do get used to it, it's a really nice stitch. And it is a tough stitch. You're, you know, it's not super full of holes. There we go. And you can see how much faster it is now that we don't have to, <laughs> now that we don't have to mind the slip stitches. Did I say mine or mind? I meant to say mind if I said mine. <laughs> okay, so work these link double crochet stitches all the way to the end of this row, and then we're going to change color again. Okay, let's work the last stitch here, and then we're going to change color again. So this time, we're going to chain one and cut. In order to keep our slip stitches to the front, we have to keep the work facing us, so the right side facing you, come all the way back, and then rejoin. It's the only way. There we go. Chain one, 
and then kind of loosen up on your tension a little bit and work that first slip stitch. And work one slip stitch all the way to the end. I probably shouldn't have told you to cut. There wasn't really a need to cut, but you know what, now that I did, and you know, we're gonna be working slip stitches exactly how we did here. Let me show you how I rejoin yarn whenever I do a boo-boo like this. Cause you really don't need to cut this cause when we come back with the, um, the slip stitches, we can just pick right up where we left off. So that's one less tail to weave in. So I do the magic knot where you, you have them laying next to each other kind of parallel like this. Let me move this out of the way. Bring this here over like this. Okay, and then you will come underneath and tie this into a knot around this strand. Really tight, just like that. Then you'll take this side and come underneath this side and tie it into a knot around the strand. There we go. So now there are two knots tied and you just pull on them. And there they are. They're never gonna come undone. You just cut the little tails off. There we go. So yeah, we really didn't need to uh, cut that. So now I've gotta rework these It'll just be a lot nicer to have one less tail to weave in since these green portions are going to have a fair amount of tails to weave in, which I highly recommend doing along the way. Unless you find it relaxing to weave tails in at the end of a project, which I know a lot of people out there do. There, no judgment. A lot of people do. So I'm just going to do that and leave that like that. Come back over here and start working on my slip stitches. Okay, I'm gonna work these slip stitches <clears throat> all the way to the end and I will be right back. You can really see just how loose I'm working them. Very loose. Okay, I'll be right back. Let's work the last slip stitch here. Yeah, I got one more to work. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and hook into this and tension that up and pull it on through. Tighten that up a little bit. And there we go. Then we just chain two into our first chain made. Go into that front loop, pull up the stitch, make sure that we avoid the chartreuse, and we start working our link double crochet again, two rows of it, followed by one final row of the slip stitches. So you'll have to, at this point, you will have to cut the tea leaf color. Then with the right side facing you, come all the way back to the beginning like a typewriter, rejoin your chartreuse and work one more row. Then we will start working the Van Dyke stitch section again. There we go. Okay, I will be back. So I'm gonna work these two rows of the tea leaf just like we did down here. And then I'm gonna work one more row of these slip stitches just like we've done twice now. And then I'll be back whenever I'm almost done with that and we're ready to start working on the Van Dyke stitches again. Okay, so let's go ahead and work our last stitch. I'm gonna start my last uh, slip stitch with the chartreuse, but finish it with the brushed khaki there we go now I'm gonna switch my hook back to the five millimeter okay we're gonna work a stacked single let me tighten that slip stitch up a bit 
So we're just going to give ourselves a little bit of tension there. Turn. And work our two stacked singles into the tea leaf color, avoiding the chartreuse. There's one, and then into that forward loop. We work the next one, and then two more double crochet into the same stitch. Okay, we're going to skip two stitches, and in the third stitch over, we repeat our Van Dyke stitch. Two and three and that's the repeat to the end skip two stitches and in the third stitch over work your van dyke stitch oops there we go and come on back when we get down to the end and we will finish this row up together and we will start the second row then i'm going to give you some homework so coming up to the end of this row here and i wanted to show you this i had dealt with this um the first time i worked this the, the first panel of this as well, where I only have two stitches left, it's really no big deal. You just skip one stitch and just work one double crochet in the end. Just like that. There you go. And then, so the next row up, we will start with our stacked single. That makes our first double crochet and then into this space right here between the double crochet and the Van Dyke stitch, just work two more double crochet for a total of three. And that's how that problem is solved. And so you can see here is the top of our stitch and everything is still going to be lined up straight whenever we come back around, you see? So it happened to me the first panel I made as well. It's really no big deal. Then just yarn over and start working your stitch pattern like we did before for a total of seven rows. So we just did row one. Now we're working on row two, all the way up to seven. And then we're gonna work the green stripe row again. So what we're looking for is a total of four sections of the Van Dyke stitch section and then three of the green striping section, all of this comprising the green striping section. But, uh, so you can see this is where we started, right down here with our seven rows. So that's one, two, three of the seven rows. And then your last row, which will be your fourth row, one, two, three, four, five. Only work five rows on your last row. And then you can see we have one, two, and three of the green stripes. So for the first three sections of the Van Dyke stitch section, do seven rows. In the fourth and last section, which is gonna be the shoulder portion here, so we are working this from the bottom up. Only work five rows here because whenever we go to stitch the two halves together, you know, that's gonna be minus, let's see here, minus these two here, and this is how it will look on the shoulder. That way it's not too much of just one color, it'll make sense, okay? Because this is the portion here that is gonna go over the shoulder. You get it. Okay, so keep working the stitch repeats between the Van Dyke and the green striping all the way up and only work five rows of the last section and then come on back and we will move on. Okay, so I have worked a total of three of the Van Dyke stitch sections, my three green stripe sections. Now for this final portion, see my first panel was the back panel. That's the straight across the neck panel. This one here, I want the to create a sort of a V-neck-ish. It's, it's, we're not gonna do any stitch decreasing. I want the V-neck to roll over naturally, kind of fall open naturally. So to do that, Let's go ahead and start our Van Dyke stitch section again. Starting off with the stacked single 
And of course I have switched over to my five millimeter hook. Start with our three double crochet into the joining stitch. And we're gonna work 17 of the Van Dyke stitches across. So that makes one, skip two, work our next stitch repeat, one. Oops, I'm like almost out of frame. Two, three, uh, skip two, and repeat. So keep doing this until you have a total of 17 groups of three double crochet. I'll be right back. There are my 17 Van Dyke stitches. Now we're just going to turn and we're going to work five, a total of five rows, so four more rows of them. So I'm going to start off with a stacked single, jump over into the space between the two stitches and just start working. So continue to do this until you have five rows total, not five more rows, of the stitch repeat. And then cut, you can weave in those ends and then we're gonna repeat the same thing on the other side. And that should hopefully give us, it should bring us up to about right here or here, one of these two stitches, if I counted it right. Um, and that should allow us to have sort of a rolled over kind of a v-neck, sort of a relaxed open collar in a way, open collar in a way, v-neck. That way it just doesn't look like, I love the boat neck style, but with this thick material, because this isn't thin, uh, I think it would look too clunky and too chunky all up on the neck and collarbone like that. It would just look a little too much. So that's why I'm opting for a nice relaxed folded over kind of an v-neck situation so i will be right back i'm going to finish all five rows of this and then i'll come back and we will start this one if you want okay let's work on the other side now this first half is all done so to start on the other side you won't be able to start a stacked single this way it just it needs a twist to work so we will go ahead and start like this so the back side facing you Go into that first stitch right there and join. There we go. Now that twist is what's gonna be needed to work the stacked single. So now that we will have a twist, we can work our stacked single. Go right into there like that, there we go. So our first stitch is just gonna be the stacked single on its own. This is the only way to keep the stitch count even 17, starting with 17 on both sides. If we were to start with one here, we would have had 18. I mean, a Van Dyke stitch here. We would have wound up with 18 on this side and that would have been a little off balanced. So now we skip two and we work our first Van Dyke stitch. So just keep doing this all the way across. Skipping two. Why it's a lot easier to work the, uh, to avoid the chartreuse by working from the front. Woo. Look at that. It's so much easier. Okay, guys, I'm going to work this total of five rows. I will be right back. Okay, so I have one stitch unworked, but because I want this to be completely filled in right here, that way it opens up and it looks like this and not with a gap in between, I have worked two double crochet into this stitch, and I'm just gonna work my third one into this stitch. It's gonna be fine. And I don't even think it would be noticed by anybody but me. That's my signature, right? <laughs> so there we go, and then just carry on. Okay, so the sun went down, I lost light. I just have a little light over here on, but I will get some more light on in just a moment. I just wanted to show you how this worked out. So I'm gonna put some ties on the end here that are gonna be pretty useless. You know, they're gonna just mostly be for looks, but they're gonna weigh this down and open it up like that. So it's gonna look pretty cool. Okay, let's get to assembling. I first need to get to some lighting. <laughs> 
Okay, so a little bit of a change of plan. Again, as I said before, I was just about to show you guys how to sew it together. Um, but when I was trying it on, the back of it, it's a bit rectangular. And the back of it, due to the way a human body is shaped, is kind of higher than the front. It, it doesn't sit well with me. So uh, again, I'm making this for the first time. I'm designing this with you on camera. This is the process. I think I want to add something to make the back longer than the front. And I think this is gonna add even more to the uniqueness of the pattern. So I had these all lined up because we were gonna go ahead and start sewing them together. So give me just a moment to undo all my stitch markers. Okay, so here's my plan. I'm going, to, here's the front, here is the back panel. You know how we stopped at five rows? I think I wanna work one more full section. So I'm gonna add the, the extra two rows and another stripe, another green stripe. That will look funny with the green stripe going across my back. You know what? Um, I'm going to finish this whole section here. Okay, I'm gonna add the two more rows to make it seven rows. I'm gonna work the green section and then the five additional rows just like this. That's what I'm gonna do because there needs to be some more going on back in the back there. It, it was kind of funny, I tried it on, that's why I had it all stitch markered shut. And the front of it is really nice, especially whenever we put the fringe. And I think you're really gonna like what we do with the fringe. It's not gonna be usual, typical, traditional fringe. It's gonna be way different. Uh, but the front of it looks really nice. The back of it looks like it comes up about that high to the, to the front. Like it's coming across my butt instead of at the bottom of my butt. Um, and I don't like that. So I'm just gonna make it that much longer than the front, basically maybe even a little longer. So that it's one of those ponchos where it's higher in the in the front than in the back and it really covers the derriere area. And I think it's gonna create a really interesting look. So yeah, we're just gonna, we're gonna do this. Uh, we're just gonna do this live. This is the creative process, right? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and tie on my yarn and I'm gonna keep going. If you wanna follow what I'm doing, cool. Uh, try on what you have so far and see if you aren't running into the same situation I am. Um, and then if you are, then I would recommend doing what I'm doing. So here we go. Okay, so here we go. I had to undo some stitches so I can tie everything together. And I'm just gonna work two more rows of the Van Dyke stitch. Then I'm gonna work one full green section and then the five rows of the Van Dyke stitch for the for the across the shoulder, across the top of the shoulder portion. Okay, I will be right back whenever I'm done with all of that. <laughs> okay, all done. Here is now we have one, two, three, four, and then the five extra rows on top. I already sewed one shoulder because I wanted to find a really nice seam. This was the nicest seam I could find that also allows it to, to lay the right way. So this is actually gonna be seamed with the right side out. Here is what it looks like on the inside. And whenever I tried to do something like this on the inside, the outside had a weird bump here and a bump here. So this is the way I am doing it to keep it nice and flush. You get a good drape and of course, when you wash this thing like, like I'm gonna do, it's gonna drape even better. So let's figure out our stitch count for sewing. You're gonna wanna count five of your Van Dyke stitches in. One, two, three, four, five. And on that last stitch of the fifth group here, that's where I put my stitch and that is 37 stitches. So then on this, on the back panel, you can just count. 37 stitches and mark that stitch is gonna be the last stitch that they'll be sewn together. I'm not speaking right. That's where your last whatever is gonna be. <laughs> okay, so here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 
22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. This is my 37th stitch here. Sorry, I don't mean to keep bumping you. There we go. Okay. So now it should be pretty even. Just have to pick it up and move it around. And there we go. And it's even. Okay, 37, 37 stitches on both sides. So how I seamed this one is with a darning needle, long piece of the khaki yarn. Let me try to get you in here a little bit. So I am working with the front loop on this side. So the loop closest to you, and then on the opposite side, it's gonna be one, two, three, the loop furthest away from you, as you know, you've got two loops, front loop and back loop. So we're gonna be working in front loop on this side, back loop on this side, and we're gonna work a kind of a serpentine stitch. I'm certain that there's probably a technical stitch term for it, in sewing, but I wouldn't have the first clue what that is. Maybe somebody knows and can educate me on that. Okay, so now coming back this way, pick up this stitch, and these stitches here are already, no, they're not. Okay, pick up this stitch and pick up this stitch. There we go. Now coming back, picking up the front loop, and then on this side, the back loop. I feel like I just said fruit loop. <laughs> and again, here and then here. And then again, really easy. <clears throat> and I'm not tugging real hard because it will cause it to cinch. It's gonna hold plenty fine without being tugged on. There's no need for a lot of tugging. I'll tug a little bit and then stretch it back out. But there's no need to go crazy with it. You kinda of want a little bit of a light touch because you don't want it to look like a little squiggly wiggle worm on top of your shoulder. Okie doke. All right, I will be right back. Okay, all done. I went ahead and weaved in that end. Um, I got to weave these ends in too, but now let's go over the optional hood, which I will be adding to mine because that's what I want. Okay, I already made the hood. It's really easy. I'm going to work this finishing touch here up with you. Oh, there we go. So you're gonna start, when you go to make the hood, you're gonna start with, because we want there to be a, um, a green stripe right on the forehead. So starting with the tea leaf, you're gonna wanna chain 90. That's gonna be 87 plus two, so seven, eight, nine. No, I'm sorry, chain 88, forgive me, 88, 89, 90. Um, and you're gonna start with your link double crochet. Let me show you how to do that really quick from a chain. So when starting link double crochet from just your chain, it's no different. The first two chains are your builder. So if you ever wanna make something with link double crochet, just chain the number of stitches you want like you would with regular crochet, then add double crochet, sorry, then add two. So skipping your first chain and into your second, you're gonna go in and pull up a loop. Into the next chain over, you'll go in, pull up a loop. Now you have three on your hook, and you're gonna yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and there's your sidebar right there. So you'll just go into that sidebar, pull up your loop, into the next chain over, pull up your loop, 
pull through two, pull through two, and repeat. Go into the sidebar, go into the next chain over. I would always recommend working the back bumps. Then you just go into your sidebar again, next chain over, and that's how you will do that. There you go. Okay, so when working with the hood, you're going to chain 90 and then just start working your stitches. Chain two, come on up another row, work back this way, join everything that we did before, seven rows, just like we did before, another green stripe, and then one, two, three, four, five rows. With the hood, where it has the five rows, that's where we're going to join it, just like that. And then this portion right here along the bottom is what's gonna get stitched to the poncho. So if you wanna make your hood, go right on ahead and do that. And of course, I'm gonna show you how we're going to attach it once I figure it out. <laughs> So I am going to go do that now. I will be right back to show you how I figured out how to attach the hood and make it look right. I'm goofy. I forgot I, I forgot I mentioned I was going to finish this up with you. So when you make the hood and you have made all the rows that you want to make, that you want to make, that you need to make, this is going to be the part here that's going to be sticking out forward. So we want to, now it's your choice if you want to work just a row of single crochet on the end so that it's not green on the tip, or if you want to work the slip stitches. I'm going to work the slip stitches to keep it consistent. I might hate it, but I don't think I will. I don't think it's going to matter that much. But I am using the 5.5 millimeter hook. And just like we did before, I'm just going to work one row of slip stitches chain one, then into the same stitch, work my first slip stitch, and there we go. All the way to the end. Of course, again, you can do this as single crochet. I'll do a few of those so you can see the difference so that you'll know right off the bat what you want to do. Okay, so here's our slip stitches, and it's going to show that on the front as you're wearing it, or you could just work single crochets it will change the look of the stripe a little but again i don't think it's going to matter so there you go i personally prefer the slip stitches just for consistency but that's a me thing and i wouldn't judge anybody either way there we go let me get over here for you Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish doing this all the way across and then I'm going to figure out exactly how I want to stitch this to the poncho. So as far as the hood goes, I ran into a little issue uh, I did not plan for um, because I'm really bad at this sometimes and it's probably not the best idea to come up with a pattern you know, as you go in the middle of a tutorial. I have more stitches in my hood than I have stitches to work with, I believe. So I am going to just make it work. Um, I have done this before, maybe not with a hood on a poncho, but in this situation, I've been in a situation before. So uh, I'm going to use my five millimeter hook and my khaki thread. I already have some points pinned in just to keep it kind of stable, but here we go. So I'm going to fold this part in and just seam it shut. Oh, I counted, um, I guess I should show you that part. I counted three groups of the Van Dyke stitch over. So one, two, three, and in that third stitch of that third group is where I'm joining it on both sides. I have these tied down so that whenever I throw it in the wash, since this is acrylic and you can, with heat, you can manipulate it. So I'm hoping that washing it a few times with it tied down like this will train it to just relax like that. Okay. 
So coming over here, undo this stitch here. Fold that in. And as far as these ends here, you're just going to have to try to keep them spaced nice and even. You know the routine. Okay. Yeah, this is the part I'm not super proud of right now, but you know, it, it is, it's grunge. This is grunge. And I'm just going to work a single crochet seam across and try to make it as neat and pretty as possible and also try to make the lack of stitches on the neck work with the too many stitches on the hood, which means I'm going to have to put a few stitches in the same stitch. So, And I'm going through both loops and I'll come over here. And see, because I have more stitches on the neck, I'm going to have to go back into the same stitch, then come over here and grab the next little space over, and that doubles it up. My dog is digging in his bed. Marlene, next space over. And I'll try to space it out to where it doesn't look too bunched up. Go right through here. Then I'll go, I don't know why he's digging. Now I'm gonna go through this same stitch again and then through a new space over here. Then a new stitch on this side and a new space on this side. And then a new stitch on this side and a new space on this side. Then the same stitch on the neck and a new a new section over here. Mm, yeah. So that's what I'm going to have to do all the way across, but it will work out. I'll be right back. Okay, so I just kept doing that doubling up on the stitches pretty frequently and I wound up at the center point here kind of lining up stitch for stitch I'm pretty happy about that there we go so it is working out and it doesn't look it doesn't look weird it doesn't look all like bungeed in it doesn't look funny it looks all right it looks pretty all right you know, I'm not mad about it. Okay, this is my center here. And I'm just going to start bungee, or not bungeeing, but working. So I'm going to go back into the same stitch I just worked into. And then come over to the next section over here. I'm just going to have to keep doing that. Next section. So it's working out. Doesn't look too bad. And as soon as I'm done doing this, I'm going to go and wash it. And when we come back, we can work on the ties here and then the fringe and then that's it it's done i will be right back okay so let's put the ties on and yes i took it out of the washer and the dryer and leaving it tied down while washed and dried because this is acrylic so you can manipulate it with heat and i washed it on warm but dried it on hot and it is now just permanently folded down like that which is great they both are but let's put these ties on here. Again, these are basically just for aesthetic. They're not really gonna be of any actual use, but here we go. Okay, so here we are 
the the V stitch is this way. This is the right side out. I'm sorry, I'm trying to twist a whole wad of yarn right in front of you guys. So let's start working right here. And this, like, don't don't fold it down, keep it folded up. Let's go into on this side right here, go into this first stitch. Sorry if I'm not speaking right. I don't usually, so this isn't anything new. Chain one and work a single crochet into that same stitch. Now jump over here on this side, and this is not really a stitch, it's the side of a double crochet, but treat it like a stitch, and work one single crochet in that. Now don't chain, just turn. And work a single crochet, and the next single over, work a single crochet. Don't, don't chain, but turn back the other way. So we're not going to be spinning the same way every time. We're gonna go like this, and it's gonna create a really nice straight edge. And so now you have your yarn coming across, sort of blocking your first stitch. Just go under it. Because we're not chaining one. If we chained one, we'd have um, like little knots on the side. And I want this to look like, I want this to look like this. You see, it's just a little straighter. Work a single crochet into the next. And without chaining one, turn, single, single without chaining turn back and work your single and your single and do this for a total of 10 inches i'll be right back whenever i get all the way down to the end okay i have worked the 10 inches so now what you're going to do is turn and just work one slip stitch into each stitch across one and then two, and that closes it off. Chain one and cut. And weave in all of your ends. Come on back and we will do the fringe and then that's it. We will do reveal shots. I will see you guys really soon. So you're gonna wanna cut some strands of yarn around 14 to 15 inches long. I will be using the tea leaf and the chartreuse. So I will use three pieces. They're gonna be five strand uh, fringe. So I'm gonna use three pieces of the tea leaf and two pieces of the chartreuse. Just kinda put those in there anywhere at random. Okay, come down here to the bottom. Here's my idea. Just like normal. Uh, I guess I'll have to use this. Okay, so everywhere there is between a Van Dyke stitch, you wanna just go ahead and pull that on through. Now all of this looks like familiar and normal but then we're going to do another knot about halfway through and do not worry about making sure that everything is perfectly even in each, each knot is centered exactly the same way because this is grunge. It's not supposed to look even and nice and pretty. It's just supposed to, it's supposed to look handmade and thrown together. And of course I did this perfectly the first time and now I'm struggling. <laughs> now that everybody is watching, it's a struggle that it's just easier for me to work on my lap, which is likely what it is. <sighs> Why? Well, hell. <laughs> there, there, kind of. That looks terrible. Well, I had it looking so good the first time. Let's try that again. Let's see if I can redeem myself. I'll undo that one and fix it off camera. <laughs> okay, three of those, two of these. Let's do this the right way this time, please. I don't even think I need a hook. I think I can just, yeah. Just grab these, pull them on through. 
please, 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 everybody is watching. Just behave. And of course, fringe is optional. And the guys in my house, now this isn't there. They don't speak for all men, but the guys in my house said it's pretty cool looking just for as far as for a guy goes, no fringe. Guys are a little bit more uh, minimalistic than that. Did I get it this time? <laughs> I think I did, yes. Except for you need to come down more. <laughs> Anyways, this is how I wanted to do the fringe. And actually, I might separate these and go every other space because that's a little close together. So yeah, I think I'm going to go every other space. So I'm going to work on this a little bit and then come back and show you how it looks. It's experimental. This one absolutely is It's crazy. I might keep it just because of how crazy it looks. <laughs> it's crazy, man. I'll be right back. Okay, got it worked out. Yeah, I can make these better on my lap, but this is what I was thinking of for the fringe. It's really funky and cool, I think, in my humble opinion. Do you do whatever you like? But this is what the way I like it to look. And so I'm gonna work these all the way across and then uh, we will do some reveal shots. Oh, and I did wash this only once. I may have mentioned that already. If I didn't, I only washed this once and I got the total relaxation of the material that I was looking for. It was a little bit stiff and now look at it. I washed and dried it and used just a little bit of fabric softener because that helps with acrylic. Um, and FYI, if you're, if you're into wigs, if you have synthetic wigs, that's how you condition your synthetic wigs. It's just a pinch of fabric softener. Anyways, um, yeah, it, it really hangs and drapes quite nicely now. Oh, 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 I almost forgot. Also, one of these. Make one of these. Like, I'll show you why to make one here in a minute. This is uh, chain 76 and work two rows of single crochet and weave in the ends. This is a tie. And I will show you what we're going to do with it whenever I do the reveal. But you might want to make yourself one of these. And then whenever you go out in your Nervancho Poncho, uh, you can just keep this in your purse for whenever you need it. And I will show you why. Here it is. The Nervancho Poncho. I wore a white sleeve shirt like he did in the music video because I'm that kind of a cornball. Um, but you can see it's a very duster style poncho. I really like having the back longer than the front. I opted not to go with fringe. I showed you guys how to do it, but I opted not to go with fringe. Now let me show you why I needed you to make a tie. So the reason I needed you to make the tie is so that we can take this front panel if you want to make it a little bit more form fitting and for reasons, and you can tie it and have this sort of cape part hanging down and it's very, very cool looking. So let me show you. So just into the holes between the Van Dyke stitches, like this, come around the back. So now I have it weaved in and I'm just going to bring it back here like this and tie it. And I'm just gonna do kind of a loose tie just, just so that you can see the example. And there you go. And so therefore it's not so flappy, it's a little bit more form fitting, it's very cool looking, and it's very grunge in my in my humble opinion. So oh, and then of course the hood. Yes, and there it is with the hood. So what do we think? Do we love it? Do we hate it? Did I capture? Did I capture a moment, a culture? Did I? Here we go. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. And here are some pictures. Remember to find the pattern in the description box down below. And remember, accept no substitutes. This is a one of a kind. I dare anybody to go out there, because I know I already did, and try to find a Nirvana, a Nirvana poncho anything. This is a one of a kind, so accept no substitutes. Love you guys.